Hey, welcome to CKLU 96.7. This is another hour of Creator Conversations. I'm your host, Jess, calling in from Our Creator. Um, check out ourcreator.com for all of your entertainment and news needs. Uh, you can check out for any kind of events that are coming up, different businesses that you should know about, uh, Sudbarians of interest, really anything that you have on your mind. And if there's anything that you think that we should write about, send us an email to info at ourcreator.com. Uh, as well, make sure that you are subscribed on all your social media feeds, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter uh, to look for updates for, from us throughout the week. Um, we work really hard to make sure that everybody in Sudbury can see a better picture of all the different things that you can do, all the different lives you can have in this r and community. So this week, uh, we have on from Yes Theatre three of the cast members of their repertory, uh, their very first, actually, year of their Yes Theatre Summer Festival. So we're doing two repertory pieces. So that's two pieces uh, kind of relaying back and forth and then both pieces you can catch on Saturday. So the pieces for this year are Merrily We Roll Along and Violet. Uh, so two very, very different musicals, but also two, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be kind of fun to see how they're, they really stretch their style. Um, and we're going to talk more with the cast members about both productions. And it sounds like there's some really great ideas for Merrily going on, um, a really cool kind of reimagining of the whole production. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to definitely get into more of that for sure. Um, but, uh, Sudbarians, what have you been doing this summer? Uh, it sounds like River and Sky just wrapped up this weekend. It sounds like everyone had an amazing time. We've got Up Here Festival we can look forward to in just a couple of weeks. Um, there's lots and lots going on, so I definitely hope that you've been enjoying the summer season outdoors, even if today it's a little on the humid side. All right, so let's go into our interview here with the folks from Yes Theatre. We've got three cast members uh, who will introduce themselves in just a second, uh, and we're going to get to know a little bit more about them, a little bit more about the productions that we're going to see this su- see later on the next month, um, and listen in. On this week's edition of Creator Conversations, we have cast members from this year's production uh, from Yes Theater, which actually is going to be this time a repertory production. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have two shows going on. So there will be Merrily We Roll Along and Violet. So we have three cast members here from both productions. So let's go around the circle here. Hi, my name is Alex. My name is Arenia. And I am Jean-Paul. Perfect. So you guys are here for the summer to round out the cast. Um, so first off, we're going to talk about Merrily We Roll Along. So in the story of Merrily, we watch three uh, three friends, and the, the courses of their lives take over 20 years. So we have Frank, Mary, and Charlie. Um, and kind of look at how um, balancing your professional goals and balancing, balancing relationships and maintaining relationships and kind of how that can change over tw- the course of two decades. Um, so can you guys expand a little bit more about what you're taking away from the plot yeah, so the interesting uh, conceit of, of this particular show is that we actually start at the end of their journey and every scene moving forward, we take a, we take a, a few years back and we see them uh, before they got to the point in which we, we start off. Yeah, so we start when they're about uh, 45 years old, these three friends, um, and they're very jaded and cynical and we move backwards in time to when they're 20 and wide-eyed and pure of heart and... Um, so yeah, that's it's kind of notorious for moving back in time rather than forward. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and right away, uh, it's Alessandro, our artistic director, and he's playing Charlie in this production. Um, he was just really taken with the idea because the idea of Yes Theater has always been uh, youth entertaining Sudbury, youth driven narratives. Um, and the original production of Merrily, um, all of these older characters were played by teenagers. Um, and so really, from the beginning of this piece's history, it just had such a uh, uh, like youth, young people have been such an essential part of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful, Alex. So it's, Thank it's you. perfectly in keeping with everything that Yes Theater has been doing over the years, right? Totally. Um, so, Arena, um, <laughs> kick me, kick me. Now. She meant Arena. She knew. <laughs> she knew. Arena. Yes. Arena. Oh. Arena. Yes. You hold the roles of Beth and see and Meg as well. And yeah, Meg yeah, yeah. as well. So these are all a few of 
Frank's love interest throughout the course of the production. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) So can you tell us a bit more about some of the characters that you're portraying and how they relate to Frank over the years? Sure. So, um, yeah, our our director, Mitchell Cushman, um, I'm going to tell you a bit about him first before I get into the question because it's very special that um, Mitchell's with us this summer. He's the youngest person to ever direct at the Stratford Festival. Um, And so he's a visionary, if I dare use that word. Um, And he's come up um, with this new concept concept for the show um, in terms of uh, a really cool thing that he's doing with the ensemble that you must come see the show to find out what that <laughs> is. Um, but uh, my characters, Beth, Gussie, and Meg, are all typically played by three different actresses. Um, it's not I don't think it's ever been done with one actress um, because they speak to one another. So, um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm playing all three of these women, and two of them are Frank's. The, the main character's name is Franklin Shepard. Um, two of them are his wives, um, and one of them is his lover, mistress. Um, and, yeah, so this is an incredibly new conceit, and it's very interesting how Mitchell has me. Very challenging as well. Um, and that's been, that's been <laughs> Part of the magic of this process is, is trying to figure out between all of us how to how to make something like this happen because uh, even on paper it doesn't necessarily make sense in a <laughs> traditional way uh, and so that's really been one of the, the great joys of, of this rehearsal process. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so Alex and Jean Paul, you're part of the ensemble, which really is the heartbeat of any uh, large scale production. Mm-hmm. Um, so how's it working with the full ensemble cast? Uh, any favorite numbers? Um, I. Th- I think my favorite number is that, Frank. It kind of starts us off. It also introduces a lot of uh, the um, less than conventional conventions <laughs> we are using uh, to tell this story. Um, it's also lots of fun to just be a silly, obnoxious party goer. <laughs> so that's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, this is this is the ensemble in the show is really taking on a role that's unlike any other show I've done before. Um, it's it's really asking a lot of everyone. There's lots of uh, um, we're pulling from like the kind of tradition of Greek choral mm-hmm. speaking, which is just something that takes a lot of practice, especially if, you're, if it's not something you've done before. Um, yeah, it's it's we're still discovering really what our role is. It's, it changes daily. Uh, yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so we already talked about the director really briefly, but uh, mm-hmm. Michael Cushman, so he's... Mitchell. 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 Mm-hmm. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> if I could get a name right, this would be great. Um, so he's worked all over the world, youngest director at Stratford, mm-hmm. uh, just picked up seven Doras. Uh, yeah, yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. No big yeah, deal, did. casually. <laughs> 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 at the grocery store. Right? Um, so what what kind of things has he added to the overall vision of the show? Um, I, I think we've touched on two of the big things so far is that um, the show has a lot of secondary characters that just aren't really integral to the the plot in in a big way and so I find I think in the past when the show was done people have a hard time keeping track of who is who and so Mitchell has added this as Alex mentioned this Greek chorus type thing that um uh, it's hard to explain. It both yeah, we don't want to give like, away any spoilers yeah. of, of how he's envisioned the, the concept. But yeah, because you have to you have to come see it if yeah. you want to see the fun stuff. So, but, <laughs> but maybe but, maybe a good um, I'll plug the the documentary that recently came out about right. the original production of Merrily. Yeah, uh, I watched which, that last night. Which is I'd recommend it to the anyone. The best worst thing that ever could yes. have, that ever could that have. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's on Netflix if you want a refresher. Go watch it. And it is um. If you want to see a really young Jason Alexander? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> everyone just cry for it. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, spoiler, like, the the original production didn't do very was well. big, big flop. Um, and, the, and it kind of, I think what Renee was saying is a lot of the characters, the secondary characters are uh, are easy to mix up with each other and, and they didn't necessarily uh, stand out in a way that made it the audience, especially with the plot moving backwards in time. Um, so that, it kind of sheds light on why that original production didn't do so well. Uh, but the show has gone on to, to have not just a cult following, but definitely a, a a commercial success as well um, throughout various productions. Yeah, and so, I mean, because we were talking about Mr. Cushman, um, but what he's done, I think, is an incredibly smart way of making sure that the audience understands who these kind of extraneous characters are, because they're uh, very heightened. Um, And it's, yeah, it's really cool, and as Alex said, we're still figuring it out, but that's what... Yeah, he's added. Lots of work for the ensemble. It's crazy. But um, 
I think I think it's a lot of work for us to help the audience understand a mm-hmm. little simpler. Uh, these characters, I don't know, they're they're yeah, they're not super integral to the story. They have little tiny nuggets of information that you can kind of. Uh, connect within the scenes to be like, oh, right, that happened earlier, this happened later, I can kind of understand that the story is moving backwards in time. Um, yeah, but I think I think in taking all of those characters kind of away and make, not away, but uh, giving them to the chorus, it's sort of simplifying the information yeah. for the uh, and, audience. Yeah. And, and also just the ambition of this project requires a lot of technical elements. And now that we're in our tech week, mm. um, that's something that we're starting to really solidify now. Um, and, it's, and, and so the way that our ensemble is functioning is now every every person on stage is very integral. We all have very uh, specific jobs in order to make these crazy transitions happen, these crazy character costume changes happen. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's just going to be unlike... Anything I've ever seen before. Yeah. For sure. And it's all the brainchild of Mitchell. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. <laughs> um, so friendship is obviously a theme that we're exploring throughout the course of the show. Um, so in your opinion, 20-year friendship, what does it take to maintain something like that? <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> one, thing, one thing they say in the uh, the best or best worst thing that ever could yeah. happen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, confusing. Yeah. They, yeah. They, uh, they ask one of the uh, people in that documentary if you could say something to your younger self, what would you say? And she says, um, I'm probably paraphrasing here, but she says something along the lines of, uh, you know, be careful with your relationships early on because you're building something, and when you get older, all you have is to kind of look back on your memories with the friends that you've had Mm -hmm. so yeah I think it's it's kind of the same thing that people say like you can't make new old friends right right? yeah if you think of a friend that's known you since you were a kid like you're never going to be able to re-explain those millions and millions and years and years of memories to somebody new that you've just met yeah it's this this journey of growing with each other that unfortunately sometimes people grow in ways that it, it doesn't allow for them to remain friends, mm-hmm. but it's um, yeah, it's all about communication and growing with each other. Because the, yeah. the music and lyrics are by Stephen Sondheim, who oh. all three of us idolize him probably above any other <laughs> human <laughs> being. What a hack! Never heard of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's just he's the Shakespeare of music theater, mm-hmm. like he, by far the most important uh, artistic figure in my life. And so yeah. the, the lyrics are just so poignant, uh, especially in. Um, there's a song called Old Friends, um, which really laments what an old friend means, what what your role is in your other old friends' lives. Um, yeah, probably articulates it better than than we could right now. So yeah. come see the show and come maybe see the yeah. Show and learn about uh, how to keep a 20-year friendship going yeah. Yeah. or not. Perfect. Um, so three main characters in the show. We've got Charlie, who is described as stubborn, up, intense, and opt- opportunistic. Hmm. Uh, Frank, who's described as talented, handsome, but misguided. Handsome is one of them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, nice. Mary, who's described as bitter, witty, and sarcastic. Who do you think you'd rather be friends with? Oh. Hmm. Ooh. I think I would choose Mary. Because, personally, just Frank... He goes off the rails pretty quick. Um, he's he becomes obsessed with success and money, and like totally get that. But you know, um, and Charlie is almost his inverse, where Charlie is um, obsessed with artistic integrity, which is incredible, but almost to a fault. So Mary, I find, is kind of like the center of these two men and the heart and. Uh, is more malleable in that way. The uh, I think in the documentary when Stephen Sondheim was explaining his envisionment of the characters, it's that one of them is someone that's chosen to work within the social construct. One of them is chosen to work outside of it, and then one of them is chosen to just give up on it entirely, mm. uh, which kind of encapsulates really. They're 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 all three very different, and they all kind of complete each other in. Uh, in a sad kind of twisted way. So who would you choose? I think I choose. I think. <laughs> get to the point. Yeah. Get to yeah. the point. Um, Rehearsal with you for yeah. me. Get to the point. <laughs> I don't know. I think I think Charlie really stands out to me. I just I can really appreciate the uh, the artistic integrity that he has, even if it is to a fault. Yeah. I think it's because uh, it, art is his life, and and to him nothing is more important than doing it the way that that he sees fit, the way that makes sense to him. If he thinks it's good, it's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I would probably say Mary, too. Yeah. She's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> and super dry and super sarcastic. And I yeah. think all of her lines 
might be my favorite because she just kind of comes out of nowhere and leaves people a little bit like, uh. yeah. <laughs> So all three of our subjects today are not from the Sudbury area. So let's go around circles, say where your hometown is okay. from. Where do you hail from? Um, so I'm originally from Orleans, Ontario, which is a suburb of Ottawa. I'm from Burlington, Ontario. I'm from Toronto, Ontario. Perfect. So have any of you guys ever been to Sudbury before yeah. in this production? No. no yes. I have not. Um, so I... Um, through through another so all three of us went to Sheridan College um, and we all kind of ended up here independently but another colleague of, of ours who's in the shows this year uh, Melindy who was also at Sheridan College um, just posted on Facebook last year just saying that someone she knew was holding auditions for their show in Sudbury and I was like okay I'll, I'll definitely check that out um, and that was for Billy Elliot last year uh, so I ended up coming to do that and I just had the best time just um, the Yes Theater was, was amazing and the production was amazing and really for me what sold me was the people and, and, and the friendships I made during that summer. Um, and so I was back also last Christmas for uh, their production of Beauty and the Beast and uh, it wasn't even questioned that, especially with these two pieces, that uh, I'd be coming back here again. Yeah, you're like, sign me up. <laughs> you got a spot for me? I'm there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so now what about you two? Having never been to Sudbury, have you ever traveled through? you heard any rumors? Mm, no. Southern Ontarians like to describe us as the armpit of Ontario. <laughs> okay, okay. I knew the big nickel. That's like the extent of my knowledge. Yeah, you see it yet? I don't know if I knew anything about Sudbury. <laughs> I don't think I've even like traveled through here or anything like that. Really? No. Man, so now that you guys have all, you've spent a few weeks here, especially you two. Yeah. Um, so so what? where is it, like, the reality versus the perception? What are some of the hidden gems that you've fallen in love with in the, the Nickel City? I, I definitely appreciate how quiet it is here. I think the city is very, very... There's lots of hustle and bustle and noise and whatever, and here it's very, very nice. I got to swim in a lake. <laughs> yeah. the loveliest thing ever. Oh, like, yeah. Lots of greenery and breezes. And, yeah, <laughs> lots which, of breezes. Is, and yeah. clouds. <laughs> And clouds. Oh yeah, clouds. Clouds. Yeah. Yeah. I do that. Clouds. The clouds in Sudbury. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. It's true. It's very true. Yeah, I, I mean, I basically agree. I mean, I, I grew up in a suburb, and this is very much like that, and it's just so peaceful. It's nice, like, getting to sleep and not hearing, like, a siren, like, every 15 minutes, or, like, a jackhammer, and you're like, why are they doing construction at 2 in the morning? Like, it's like, yeah, it's really, I just find it really quiet and it's nice I mean to be rehearsing two beautiful shows while we're here is making it a dream come true so it feels very much like a, a small town on a large plot of land uh, <laughs> yeah. ah, it seems like a little spread out yeah. it's very spread out and yeah. our friends are so generous in in, in driving us around always yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't have cars. Yeah. there's like a uh, there's a map that exists somewhere I, I have never been able to find it again but I saw it once and it's like the geographic space of Sudbury, uh -huh. and then they're like, and here's Toronto and Mississauga, and like all these big cities that would all just fit within uh -huh. the geographical distance uh -huh. <laughs> oh <my God>. of <laughs> Sudbury. <laughs> Yeah, everything is the greater city of Sudbury. Yeah, everything is spread. Definitely. Yeah, spread yeah we got out. lots of room. We got yeah. room here. Yeah. Okay, cool, guys. Well, this is it for our first segment. So can you guys give us a hit where, where, when the dates are for the shows and where they can get tickets? Um, yeah, so you can uh, look on our Yes Theatre website for ticket information. YesTheatre.com. YesTheatre.com. Uh, we're at the Ernie Checkers Theatre, um, which was... <laughs> that's, that's correct, right? Checkers. Checkers. Oh, my God. Yeah. Checker, Ernie Checkers Theatre uh, on the Laurentian... Campus? Yeah, Thornhill University Laurentian. Yeah. Yeah, we've only we've just recently gone there, so we're still we're still. <laughs> yeah, there. we're like yeah. We're <laughs> it out. So yeah, August first to the nineteenth. <laughs> Get your tickets now, and because it's in rep, uh, sometimes you can catch both shows in one day. Hey, hope you enjoyed that first half of our interview. This is CKLU 96.7. This is an hour of Creator Conversations. So this week we had a few guests on from uh, Yes Theatre. We had Alex, Jean-Paul, and Arenia, um, which I think that's the first time I got her name right. Wow. I'm proud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they're giving us the rundown on everything that you can expect to see from the production of Merrily We Roll Along. You can catch that at the Ernie Checkers Theater at Thornlow, Thornlow University from uh, August 
1st to the 19th. Uh, check your dates, though, because they are performing two plays in uh, repertoire. So uh, just make sure you're getting tickets for the right day because the other production is completely different. But we're going to hear more about that later. Um, also, uh, for Merrily, you should mention again, um, Mitchell Cushman is the director of this production. Um, and so actually, it is a really great honor for us to have him here in Sudbury. He just won, I think, earlier this month, seven Doras. So, like, I mean, that's a pretty big deal there. Uh, the youngest director to ever be on or to ever hel- helm production at Stratford. Uh, he's perf- he's directed all over the world. So, um, yeah, definitely excited to see what he's come up with for this piece. Um, and if you're interested in a little bit uh, more back information, we kind of mentioned it very briefly throughout the interview, but uh, there is a documentary on Netflix called The Best Worst Thing That Ever Could Have Happened that is essentially about the uh, creation of Merrily We Roll Along and uh, what an infamous disaster it was in the box office, uh, which is a whole story all on its own. Um, anyway, so we are going to go into some music here. So first we are going to play a song from Merrily. Uh, this one is called Gussie's Opening Number, which will be a song that will obviously be performed by Arenia, who is perf- playing the character of Gussie. Uh, we're also going to go into a song from Up Here Festival. So that is coming up the weekend of the 17th. Um, so 17th through the 19th uh, is Up Here Festival, uh, a song by Evan Red Sky, who is one of the Northern Series artists. Uh, so the Northern Series over a week over the weekend uh, has a multiple venue uh, showcase from five to seven. Free shows at different intimate venues of emerging artists that Up Here Festival wants you to know about. So definitely something to check out. So let's get right into it. So we have Gussie's opening number from Merrily We Roll Along. And then we have Dog Days by Evan Redsky. Thanks for tuning in to Creator Conversations presented by Our Creator. We can't play the music right here, but check out below for the link to this week's playlist, as well as all the links you need for this week's guest. Make sure you're subscribed to Our Creator on all your feeds. Look us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all under Our Creator, and use the hashtag Our Creator to be featured. Hey, 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 welcome back to CKLU 96.7. So that was a really quick music break here for Creator Conversation. So we had two songs there. That was Gussie's opening number from Merrily We Roll Along, which you can check out at the Ernie Checkers Theatre at Thornlow University from August 1st to the 19th from Yes Theatre as part of their an inaugural season of Yes Theater Summer Festival. Uh, two productions in repertoire, so uh, Merrily We Roll Along as well as Violet. Uh, the second track we had there was Dog Days by Evan Redsky. Uh, Evan Redsky will be performing as part of the Northern series uh, uh, that'll be happening over Up Here Festival the weekend of August 17th to the 19th. Um, so check out both of their websites for more information, yestheater.com and upherefestival.com. There's Lots of things to look forward to. The summer is not quite over yet. All right, so let's get into our second half of our interview. So in our first half, we talked a lot about Merrily Roll Along. Um, Storyline of that follows three friends over the course of 20 years, going backwards in time uh, to see the changes that go undergo that go through their relationship and their careers and how that reflects upon them. Um, so excited to see that. Uh, our second one is a little bit different. Um, so this one, are kind of the theme is more about more about change, more about seeking change in your Self. Um, so Violet is uh, the second play of production that's going on at at uh, Thornlow this this summer. Um, originally starring Sutton Foster. If you if you're a bit of a theater buff and know who that is. Um, anyway, so let's get straight to the interview here. So we had Arenia, uh, Alex, and Jean Paul in with us uh, to talk all about it. Uh, both all three of them are in both productions this summer. We are back with the cast members from uh, Yes Theatre's Summer Festival here. So in our first hour, we were talking all about Merrily Roll Along. In our second half here, we're going to talk about the up production that they're going to be doing at the Ernery Checkers Theatre, uh, Violet. So Violet takes us on something of a cross-country road trip from North Carolina to Oklahoma, where our protagonist is hoping to be healed by a tele- televangelist healer. Uh, can you tell us a little more about this? What what brings her on this journey? Hmm. I think 
Uh, well, yes, she is hit in the face by an axe blade when she's very little. Not dramatic. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Drama. Yeah, easy peasy. Uh, <laughs> so she um, is hurt both outside and inside, I think. Um, she is, she's seen this televangelist on uh, TV when she's very young, and they, I mean, there was no hope after that, right? This young, injured <laughs> girl sees that she can potentially be healed by this uh, human being, and that's what brings her... And that's yeah. it. Yeah. She's like a profound uh, belief in, in, in God and, and mm-hmm. the power that, that he has. Uh, yeah. And in the goodness of God, and that He must do this because her need is so great. Yeah, it's not even it's not even a question for her. Right. Mm-hmm. She just knows that she just has to get there, and then and then it'll happen yeah. for mm-hmm. her. Yeah. Yeah. yeah man, uh, <laughs> she must be awfully compelled to take that long of a bus trip. Yeah. 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 Sure. Uh, <laughs> All right, so could you tell us all, uh, tell us about your characters? I know you particularly, John Paul, mm-hmm. are the preacher, yes. which yes, in the second half is going to it plays a little bit more of a role. Very much. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> but can you can you tell us a little bit more though about your character? Yeah, so he is uh, he's the televangelist preacher that she sees. Uh, he uh, I don't know if you were, like versed in that world of like televangelism and. I mean, it's Who isn't? Kind of <laughs> Who isn't, right? They, it's like a million, million dollar industry. They set up these huge, it's, it's like a mega church almost. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so it's almost this, it's almost like a performance rather than a service. And mm-hmm. they kind of bring people up onto the stage and heal them. Uh, yeah. He's using like quotation power. marks if yeah. you can hear that in his voice. Yeah, <laughs> no, you can hear me. Heal. Uh, yeah, and it's it, it seems a little... Seems a little iffy, <laughs> a little bit. But so many people are so into this and are, mm-hmm. s- are such strong believers that they will be healed if they go and see this person. It's kind so. of like the power of uh, the power of belief, like the power yeah. of God. You know, you yeah. think it'll heal you, it will heal you. Yeah, yeah. and the show Absolutely. alludes to it a little bit. But yeah, it, like you said, it very much is a performance. Like mm-hmm. like you go see a play or something like that. Like it's entertainment to some degree, but also with this element of like profound belief. Mm. Yeah. It's really unique, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then what about you two, your characters for the show? Sure. Um, I play, uh, I'm in the ensemble for most of it. I play a character also called the old lady, um, who I think is one of the first people um, to react to Violet's face. Oh, there's a conceit in this show that um, her face is hugely scarred, but um, the actress's face is not. So it's up to the ensemble, really, to show the audience how violent that scar is on her face without them being able to see it. Um, and so I'm one of the, I think one of the first people to be like, ooh. Um, and then uh, she pretty much just serves as someone who's um, at the end of her life, wrinkled and, and worn and looking at this young woman who wants nothing more than to be beautiful and, and trying to help her a little bit mm-hmm. let go of that. Yeah, and... and- you know, conventionally beautiful as yeah. well, with all of the things that come along with you being beautiful, which is like getting all the boys and getting all totally. this attention and having photographs taken of you and very yeah. kind of like yeah. surface level. Thank levels. you, thank you for yeah. clarifying that. Yeah, <laughs> conventional beauty is mm. what she's after. She references lots of the uh, famous female icons of of her time mm-hmm. in terms of like the, the what she finds beautiful and she, you know. Yeah, Cheekbones and lips. Eyebrows. Grace yeah, Kelly's yeah. this and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice hair and, you know, all that kind of stuff that is mm-hmm. invisible to the eye. But, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 She's very obsessed with her looks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, all right. And what about you, Alex? So your part in this production. You've yes. Got a few that you take on. I'm definitely playing. Yeah. So uh, once again, I'm, I'm largely in the ensemble. Um, uh, Different. There's different iterations of like bus drivers, who is obviously someone that she'll interact with, uh, going on such a long bus journey. Um, this show also has a, a kind of time travel uh, function built into the script, where we see not only Violet as she is now, but also a younger version of her, also post accident as well. But um, the main Violet we see is her as a, as a young woman going off on this journey, but we also see her as a teenager, um, which is a whole different set of, you know, having to be in high school when worrying about all the things that people have to worry about that at that age. Already yeah. worry yeah. about yeah. high school. Plus, plus this. I'm disfigured. Yes. Right. Gruesome, so I, uh, later on in the show, I play a character that has a, uh, 
um, one of her first kind of, I guess, sexual awakening interactions um, when she, uh, at a young age. Um, yeah, and uh, there's also this lovely dream sequence that happens that mm-hmm. that uh, Irene is also a part of that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's lots of lots of Some little flashbacks. Alex plays yeah. the guitar. I play the guitar in it. Lovely. Yeah, yeah, oh. and. Um, harmonica. And, and harmonica. I play, oh, and yeah. I play harmonica. Yeah, oh, yes. lovely harmonica. And I'm also uh, assistant music directing on both productions as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big job. Yeah. Many hats. Harmonica. Still working on it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we see through the themes of Violet. Obviously, it's, there's a huge desire for change. So in Violet's uh, in case she is kind of craving this outward physical change or outward physical change, mm-hmm. she obviously feels she's completely disfigured. Nothing that can be done about it. Um, but in the end, the change that she kind of goes through is a more obviously internal change, right? Yeah. yeah. So, can you guys share anything from your personal experience where you've maybe kind of desired to change or felt like you weren't didn't know enough, you weren't ready for a certain opportunity or challenge, something like that, and it's kind of turned out differently. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a really interesting question. Mm-hmm. I think as like actors, we're constantly having to reevaluate ourselves in in our portrayal of different characters and thinking like, you know, how do I relate to this person? How do I not relate to this person? Um, that's yeah, that's that's a really tough question, I guess. I don't, yeah. I don't know if I have a that's specific so example. Deep. Yeah, I think it's something. I mean, <laughs> as as actors, yeah, and we're all like, Whoa. Um, as actors, we're constantly being looked at and unfortunately judged based on that, right? And so it's it, it's kind of an always struggle. I mean, I think for m- most people, it, it's how you look is such an always struggle. So I don't. We're we're lucky to have gone through the the school that we did I think uh, which is you know if you're in like a math program or a science you're not you're not constantly evaluate, evaluating yourself emotionally and physically and having other people grade you on on, on those to some degree um, and so I think it does create more of an awareness just uh, I don't know, not, not so much a big one-time event, but it's little things yeah. every day. I think we're constantly yeah. Yeah, growing someone, that way. Someone once said something to me, I think, I think when you're sad, you kind of maybe hide yourself away from the world a little bit. And somebody, I was going through maybe some sad times <laughs> uh, a while ago, and someone said, don't keep yourself a secret that you have so much to offer and so much to give and so much to say. And I really like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and that was really, that, that definitely um, made me think a whole lot about yeah. my place in this yeah. Yeah, weird yeah. <laughs> world. I think also just to kind of, not, yeah, just not, don't hide yourself away. You have so much inside of you that everyone mm-hmm. could benefit from. Yeah. I think a lot of us that have, that have come from, that don't live in Sudbury, that have come here, taking this time in the summer to just get away from wherever has been going on back there and just this is we're working on on two very uh, challenging pieces um but it's very much a time for us to also just kind of be with ourselves and and look inward a little bit i think so yeah. i feel at least yeah. a reflective time can yeah. i add one more thing is this is okay um <laughs> i think that a, a big theme in violet is like being seen and what it means to truly be seen by mm-hmm. somebody else and and i think that that's something that all people seek because being seen physically is such a different thing than being truly seen by someone who loves you or who knows you. Yeah. So that's a big thing in Violet. Yeah, mm-hmm. letting letting someone know you as opposed to seeing you, yeah. right? Or seeing yeah, yeah, yeah. inside. Of Violet, don't hide yourself. Don't hide yourself. Because yeah. 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 They, see, they see her cheek. That's mm-hmm. what they see. And then she's so much more than that, which... Mm-hmm. You'll see. When She's you come so to the fixated show. on it that she can't even see herself. She, right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. Totally. Right. All right. So, um, start of our story in Violet, we start at Spruce by Spruce, Spruce, Spruce Pine, Pine. Pine. Yeah. <laughs> North Carolina, traveling to Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. Looked up the distance. Roughly a thousand kilometers. Nice. Fifteen hours drive. Um, so that's quite a road trip. What would you travel a thousand kilometers for? Mm. Oh my god. Um. Uh, humans like if if Jean Paul here were to move a thousand kilometers away from me I'd take an a thousand kilometer bus oh, ride that's very nice well I, would. <laughs> I think, I think <laughs> we just <forgot. laughs> um, um, but yeah I think the only answer that springs to my mind is like people mm. on that distance I think experiences um, just like 
something that if something piques your interest and you have the means to do it, I mean, uh, Irina and I were both lucky enough to, to go to China not so long ago. Ooh. That's very far away, many hours to get there. <laughs> um, and 100% worth it to me, I think, just yeah. because it was something that. Something like a 24 hour flight or something like yeah. that, right? It's like a 13 hour flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. So, thank yeah. God we didn't have to bust there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a 22 hour flight. I've been trying to think about, like, um, like, I've been thinking about this, like, what miracle would I want? Or, like, what, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly what you asked. What, what would make me travel that yeah. far? Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I don't particularly know. Yeah. Um, my sister just had a little baby. Uh -huh. And and here you are in Sudbury. How far is she? Sudbury, yeah, she's back. She's in Whitby. She's in Whitby right now. Um, yes, hello, Dexter. Hi, welcome <laughs> to the world. Um, yeah, but I was. I, I think my like world has kind of changed now that there's like this little baby in my life. I'm just like really thinking about things a lot differently, and mm -hmm. I've been thinking about that question for a long time. And then this baby was born, and now I, I think that's my answer. Maybe family or, or, yeah. or people like connection human mm. connection totally. yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 good answers guys yeah. <laughs> all right good thank question. you good question. <laughs> all right <clears throat> let's get into some Sudbury trivia guys oh god yes, it's, it's about time I don't know what you guys know about our fine city here oh, okay all right so this one's a true or false <laughs> Sudbury was used as a test ground for NASA as astronauts learn to walk on the moon's surface. I'm true. Gonna say, I'm going to say definitely true. I'm going to say true. Because wasn't it very, like, gravelly and, like... Yeah, ding, 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 yeah. ding. That's true. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love oh. space. <laughs> so you love I, Sudbury. The, that whole question I wasn't even thinking about answering. I was just thinking about the sky, so... Thanks so much. What's the next question? <laughs> <laughs> Sudbury is built in the basin, in a basin created by the impact of what? A meteor. Um, a, a meteor, yeah, that's the only thing I can think of. Crater, crater. meteor. Yeah, yeah, comet. Comet. Oh, nice. Comet. comet. There you go. Comet. Yeah. Nice. Wow, good job, yeah, that was it. Yeah. Two for two. <laughs> Take a guess here. How many lakes are in Sudbury? Fifteen. Seventy-five. <laughs> Two hundred and seven. Fifty-six. 52. 512. There's more than 300? 304 is even What? Number, right? My God. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. So, based on Sudbury residents' rating of their overall life satisfaction to Statistics Canada, <laughs> in 2015, Sudbury was rated as the blank city in Canada. The 25th. No. What what less mean? or more? No, like, Wait, is it like the movie? happiest city? Yes, like, it is yeah. the happiest oh, city. Yeah. It's the happiest? It's I just threw out a random number. City in Canada. That's so it's exciting. It's rated as the 25th city in Canada. I don't it's know. The 25th <laughs> city. There's no city more 25th <laughs> than Sudbury, guys. It's the happiest. Let me tell you. I was actually having a conversation with someone about this last night, though, that because I've moved away from home, and I don't think I'll, I would ever move back to my hometown just because I've found... Places to go. I've moved on, mm -hmm. um, but the people I was talking to that are from here said like we're really happy here. Like we love being here, and they, they go mm -hmm. to school here. And I'm like that's that's beautiful. I love being here too. I yeah. I'm yeah. so happy that that they just love their city. You know, yeah. Yeah. so much love. People love Sudbury. Right? <laughs> true or false? Another true or false? Uh, Sudbury is home to Canada's longest running outdoor music festival. True or false? No, I think no. Blues Fest is the longest, isn't it? I don't. <laughs> I think that's false. I Wait. don't know. I don't know. Are you ready? It's true. Uh, oh, it? Lake Festival L'Oreal. It was just a few weeks ago. Oh, right. Oh, that's right. the one everyone went to. Yeah. How long does it run for? It This year was 47 years. Whoa. So. Oh. Name this classic game show host mm. who is from oh. South Alex Trebek. Alex Trebek. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. I knew it. Oh. You guys, you were ready. Yeah. <laughs> Alex Trebek. I love Jeopardy. I love Jeopardy. <laughs> <laughs> the category is space. <laughs> <laughs> the cat stays for 500 points. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> all right, it's, it's been a time, guys. Oh, so we are all wrapped up here for creator conversations. So one more time, can you tell everyone again where they can get their tickets 
and when the show is. Okay, you can get your tickets at yestheater.com. Use the code SAVE10YES to save 10%. We run August 1st to the 19th at the Ernie Checkers Theater at Thornlow University, Laurentian. Please come out and see us. Two shows in rep. It's going to be beautiful. Violet, Ooh. merrily we roll along. You can see them both on Saturdays. All right. Hi. Welcome back to Creator Conversations on CKLU 96.7. So this hour we have talked to with some cast members from Yes Theater's Summer Festival um, from the productions of Merrily We Roll Along and as well as Violet. So you can catch both of those those shows at the uh, Ernie Checkers Theater on Thornlow University from August 1st to the 19th. Uh, make sure you check out yestheater.com for tickets. Um, and uh, keep an eye out as well because I know they've got at least a one at least one coupon going on going around here for 10% off. Um, all right, so on ourcreator.com, there's a few things for you to check out. Uh, you can get caught up on some back episodes of Creator Conversations. We've got a few new ones out that we've been catching up on. Uh, one with Tessa Gooden, who is also a Yes Theater alum. Um, she just recently released a new single called Come Up for the Weekend. Uh, so you can hear more about that and hear and uh, all the details about what other things she's been working on. We've also got one of our Maker Mondays posts. So we talked all about uh, Tara Luna Jewels. So we got to know more about the maker behind those creations. We've also compiled a list of top five biking and running trails in Sudbury. So if you're looking for something to do to get active and get out there, definitely check it out. We've got a few more episodes of Creator Conversations Up. Our conversation with Matt Heidi is available, so you can listen to that, where we talk all about his book, uh, City Still Breathing, and the Project Canada bookmark plaque that was just uh, put up in uh, with a segment from his book in front of the townhouse. Uh, we've also got... Um, some information about uh, Northern Lights Festival that we just passed. We've got information about Up Here Festival that's going to be coming up. Um, got lots of stuff to look at, so definitely keep your eyes peeled. And if you haven't already, make sure you also subscribe to our, our creator on Facebook, on Twitter, and Instagram, so you can get all sorts of updates on what's going on in your community straight to your newsfeed. I uh, don't want you to miss out on a second of any excitement. So let's go into our second segment of music here. So we're going to go. To, we're going to do two songs here from our uh, two songs from one is from Violet. Uh, so we have Let It Sing. Uh, we also have our favorite year by Emily. Um, I might be saying that wrong. Um, she, again, is another one of the performers as part of the Northern Series at Up Here Festival over uh, August 17th to the 19th. Um, so she'll be performing f- for the free Northern Series 5 to 7 throughout the weekend. Um, so check that out for sure. Let's jump right in. Thanks for tuning in to Creator Conversations presented by Our Creator. We can't play the music right here, but check out below for the link to this week's playlist, as well as all the links you need for this week's guest. Make sure you're subscribed to Our Creator on all your feeds. Look us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all under Our Creator, and use the hashtag Our Creator to be featured. Hey, 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 we're here to close out the hour for Creator Conversations on CKLU 96.7. Uh, so that was two songs uh, that you can hear in town very soon. So we had Let It Sing from the cast of Violet. Um, you can, if you want to get familiar with that production, you can find it on Spotify. Start singing along, get ready to fall in love with it on stage. Um, <clears throat> then we also had our favorite year from Emily Kone. So she'll be performing at over Up Here Festival for, as part of their Northern Series, um, 5 to 7 o'clock at a few various venues, so you can kind of pick and choose who you want to check out. Um, so really exciting uh, little series there. Free shows if you are if you uh, maybe aren't a passport holder um, and are looking to experience Up Here. But hey, if you're not a passport holder for Up Here Festival and you're still looking for an affordable way to help out up your festival is definitely still looking for volunteers so you can get in touch with them uh find their website up here.com um make sure and uh register whatever you think you would like to help out with um an event like this uh really uh, volunteers are what it makes it makes the pulls the whole thing off right so if you think that you can lend a hand in any way um definitely a great way to 
put some karma out there, right? Put some good energy out into the world. Take care of your community. Sounds good, right? Um, all right, so Yes Theater, they are doing their summer theater festival, uh, repertory productions of... Merrily We Roll Along, as well as Violet. Uh, both of those productions, you can find the original Broadway cast recordings on Spotify if you want to get familiar with some of the tunes that you'll be hearing. Um, but you'll be able to, you can get tickets right now at yestheater.com. Use the code save 10 yes to get 10 percent off your ticket pr- uh, ticket purchase um those shows will be running from august 1st to the 19th at the Ernest checkers theater on thornlow university all right so that's it for us this hour so we're gonna sign off here and we'll hand it over for six degrees